Now, in-depth coverage of the Texas legislative session. In session, in depth. Senator Davis, you, yesterday you gave me a sheet indicating that it was your intention to filibuster. Yes, Mr. President, I You're recognized. intend to speak for an extended period of time on the bill. A special session at the Texas State Capitol comes to an end, but that's only after a major demonstration on the Senate floor and in the gallery. Good morning and thank you for joining us for In Session In Depth. Governor Perry is calling for another special session to start tomorrow. The call may sound familiar to the late items during the first special session. Perry wants Republicans to take up the stalled abortion restrictions, as well as two other topics that got caught up in the Senate's final day funding for statewide transportation, and creating a punishment for 17-year-olds convicted of capital murder. We're going to make sure that we've got plenty of time and no human being can talk for two weeks. So <laughs> this bill is going to pass. I would be shocked, actually, if they put this on the last day of the calendar again. This was a, a mismanagement of the calendar, honestly, by Republican leadership that gave us this opportunity. The recent abortion debate, a hot topic this week at the National Right to Life Convention in Dallas. Governor Perry was the keynote speaker, and he did not hold back. In fact, even the woman who filibustered the Senate the other day was born into difficult circumstances. It's just unfortunate that she hasn't learned from her own example, that every life must be given a chance to realize its full potential, and that every life matters. I would just say that it, it really demeans the office that he holds to make a personal statement like that. This week I spoke with Senator Dan Patrick, who says the next special session could be smoother, or we could see more of the same but we should knock this out in 10 days or two weeks. We shouldn't have to be there 30 days. Now, we have to go through all the same steps. So hundreds of people can come to testify again, and people can, if they want to try and slow down the process like they did. And so, you know, I don't know how long we'll be there. Patrick referring to the fireworks involving Wendy Davis during the final hours of the first special session as demonstrators filled the Senate gallery to oppose a Republican push for several new restrictions on abortion. Among other things, the bill would add a fetal pain provision. That means abortions after 20 weeks of pregnancy would be a no-go because of the notion the fetus is developed enough to feel pain. It would also limit abortions to surgical centers and require doctors to have admitting privileges at nearby hospitals. And we're going to do everything we can in the special session to try to defeat this bill. If we can't, we'll go down fighting. Democrats maintain the restrictions would close all but five of Texas 42 abortion clinics, and that could have devastating implications. So one rising star in the Democratic Party took center stage and fought back in the national spotlight. The hallway outside the Texas State Senate seemed almost like the backstage of a rock concert after the special session. Today was democracy in action. Senator Wendy Davis ended her night with supporters. From Peggy in Austin, Texas. After more than 11 hours of talking and standing nonstop. Please accept this copy of my testimony. To run up the clock and kill the abortion bill. Tonight was pretty unprecedented. Uh, tonight in many ways was historical. Certainly one to watch. Republicans cut Davis filibuster short, just shy of midnight, the deadline they needed to meet for a vote. It's probably the worst night that I've experienced since I've been in the Senate. Democrats worked to keep time ticking. The rules were ignored uh, and the whole process was rigged. But hit roadblocks in the final minutes. At what point must a female senator raise her hand or her voice to be recognized over the male colleagues in the room. The thousands of Davis supporters took over. Troopers had to force several out of the chamber. You missed a hell of a show. <laughs> <laughs> well, they did everything they could, including, you know, getting the crowd to chant. I mean, you had House members, House members. Democrat House members revving up the crowd, trying to drown us out so we couldn't do our business. That's not the way democracy works. The vote came and went, a little too late to count, thanks to what some are now calling the people's filibuster, and of course, their chosen rock star. My back hurts, <laughs> and I don't have a whole lot of words left in my vocabulary after all that talking, but I 
am overwhelmed, honestly, by the thousands of people who participated in what happened today. Talk has reemerged about Davis possibly running for governor next year. Some say statewide and national exposure from the filibuster could really make a difference. President Obama's account sent out a tweet saying something happening in Austin tonight. Texas hasn't had a woman nor a Democrat as governor since Ann Richards in the 1990s. Our discussion continues online as the second special session kicks off in little more than 24 hours. We'll have complete in-depth coverage on the air and online. Be sure to visit the legislative section of KXAN.com. There you'll find our guide to the legislative process in Texas, our list of the mayor, major players, and my blog from the Capitol. It's all in our legislative section on KXAN.com. And you can email me your thoughts and questions at josh.hinkle at KXAN.com. You can also find me on Twitter at HinkleJ. And as we close out the first special session, I want to thank everyone who has helped bring our in-depth coverage of the Texas legislature for the past month, from our roundtable guests to the production crews. Thank you so much, and thank you for watching In Session In Depth. Have a great morning.